What is street food in America? The, uh, the cart food is the best food you will taste in this town. It's from the heart. For Portlanders, it's a food cart. Now home to over 500 carts. I mean, this is America's street food. It's the epitome of America because you have these cultures and everybody from all around the world in this one country just blending and coming together. But where does this love come from? This got started in downtown Portland in the 1980s. When a guy asked a guy that owned a parking lot down there, he said, hey, can I put a cart here and sell hot dogs? And the guy that owned the parking lot said, yeah, no problem. You just gotta pay me 50 bucks a month. Today, the options you can get at food carts are endless. It can be a little overwhelming at that. That's why I had to reach out to Lost Plate, experts in the food cart game here in Portland. And today, they're taking us to three places they've selected just for us. And it all starts in the Hawthorne Asylum Food Pod. Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Good, how are you, nice brother? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet oh, you. can you get me here? Yeah, yeah, there we go. How are you doing? <laughs> Born in New York, love Lebanese heritage. Having owned the Pleasant Peasant since 2014, Sam has worked and interned all over the world from China, Mexico, and even Europe. And I was just taken by the food. But it's something about Lebanese cuisine that truly sparks that love and passion for Sam. Served at, uh, the food that's served at home is different than the food that's served on the streets. Serving you the same dishes that made Sam fall so deeply in love with Lebanese cuisine. I guess, you know, the love for Tom with some things it is uh, my own twist, other things are kept kind of classical. Our peasant bread salad is very known as a fatout salad in, in Lebanese cuisine. I guess I just use different names to make it a little bit more approachable. Flavors will stay true to Lebanese flavors. Most of Lebanese food or Middle Eastern food yeah. is a descendant of Ottoman food. And shawarma just comes from that term meaning to stack meat. Um, obviously here we don't have that vertical spit that's rotating and kind of slice off the meat. We chose to do it on a flat top grill. But it's not just Sam's knowledge. But it's something else that sets the Pleasant Peasant apart. Yeah, what well, he is so giving. He showed me a little bit of everything he's got here. We got the falafel, we got his pita wrap with the chicken, shawarma style. He's got the fries in there. I mean, I think he's loaded. The crispy cauliflower bowl. Inspiration taken from a Sunday fry in Lebanon. After being fried to an ultra crisp, the cauliflower is then coated in a sauce inspired from Lebanese flavors. That cumin, the salt, the lemon juice, the, the garlic, added some olive oil and just kind of made a little, a little taste of that. It's so hearty, it's so thick, you, like, you don't even realize there's no protein source there. And then the way he's dried out the cauliflower made that moisture just compact, pull that water out so it's gonna be more flavorful, and then fried it, tossed it with the spices, touch of yeah. saltiness, perfect. Yeah. But you know Sam fed us good. Next up, we got the yogurt and eggplant peasant bowl. Bread crumbs then topped with fried eggplant, then covered and smothered in a garlic aioli, and finally topped with a little bit of parsley, sliced almonds, and some cranberries. All right. Oh, I just want to dig in. No, you got it. Go for it. There's a big bite. Ready for that? Yep. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my goodness. So loving with that yogurt sauce too. It's everywhere. Yeah. Well, that's the one. That's part of the warmth, though. It's tasty. Oh man. Yeah. Eggplant so underrated. It's just so creamy. Melt in your mouth. And then the mixture with the cooling ingredient, like the yogurt, you get the crunch from the slivers of almonds. You get the touch of sweetness and tart from that cranberry. God. And then the simply deceiving, a labor of love falafel. Can you feel that when you broke it? I know that. Break yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Got that crisp, but it's still soft on the inside. You you got to be frying them and making them on the spot, eating them on the spot, and enjoying them on the spot. Where have you been around so far? Cheers. Cheers is right. Mm. Man, mm -hmm. you could dangerously pop in about twelve of those yeah. a day. But Sam, I tell you, nothing speaks to a Lebanese person's heart 
Like French fries. Lebanese person, whether abroad or has lived there, you know, you say French fry wrap and they're like, yes, childhood memories, you know, being at the pool or at the beach. And Lebanese cucumber pickles, so no dill in there, no sweetness, just straight up brine. And the famous garlic aioli. And using authentic Lebanese bread. And so basically, if you were to go down the streets of Lebanon, ask for shawarma, that's what you're gonna get. Man, Sam, Sam must love me a lot because it is a lot of french fries on this and garlic aioli. Hey, let me tell you something. They were doing it right on this cart right here. I mean, I'm no Lebanese food expert. Y'all know that. But that is just so much love, so much knowledge, so much cool stuff coming at you right here from Portland. This spot right here for some Lebanese food. Unreal. Let's, if you had an evolution to the food carts, it went from just random carts in a, in a parking lot to a curated pod, to a highly curated pod. Now we're bringing them back indoors because of the weather. I mean, this just opened in 2020 and had to close due to Corona. So all the people in here have been hit so hard. They haven't had that chance yet to get it going and really benefit from this beautiful space. From outside to indoors, we're now at Spice of Africa with Wambui who's originally from Kenya, and more specifically... I'm the Kikuyu tribes, but I'm from Nairobi, and my village is on the outskirts of Nairobi. Okay. okay. Originally so. only offering cooking classes, but now has her own space and kitchen. This is my little workshop. Yeah. <laughs> Wambui is going to show us some traditional Kenyan dishes. We're going to make one today, which is the ugali and sukuma wiki, mm. which is hot water cornbread. But trust me, Wambui is going to make sure we don't walk away hungry at all. She's going to get us started with some Kenyan vegetable samosas. In Kenya, we normally don't use egg roll wrappers because obviously those are expensive or they're just not available. You can tell she's done this once or twice. Look at that. It's the way she's folding it is not easy with an egg wrapper. Folding it perfectly, not missing a beat. Potatoes, peas, carrots, and spices folded and tucked into egg wrappers and then ready. Okay, I'm gonna take this guy, little guys and fry them up. What is that? This is balsamic. Balsamic, little balsamic. There you go. Like these are traditional. She's introducing you to Kenyan cuisine, but she's still adding that little bit of balsamic on the top. Just her little twist, her touch. She's putting her her identity into this food. Egg roll does exactly what you need it to. Gives you that crunch on the outside, slightly fried flavor. And then she's got the carrot, the peas, the potato on the inside. She's not mashed at all. So again, it's just a variety of textures going on inside there. It's creamy, it's hearty. And then that balsamic is more key than you think. Oh, so this is the favorite, huh? This is a favorite of people. It's not necessarily Kenyan. Not Kenyan favorite, but the people here in Portland. Here, people here favorite. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. As Ms. Wambui started prepping our next dish for the day, I couldn't help but wonder what it was that made her fall in love with cooking. Because mm, I like flavor. Yeah. You know, I like my food to taste like something. And she couldn't have demonstrated that any better than with this next dish. Heavily coating the chicken in a Cajun seasoning for her Cajun jerk chicken tacos. Oh, and one more thing. She said it'd be a small portion. I'm glad I'm hungry. She kept telling me we were going to small portions, and these don't look small to me. In Africa, we don't make small portions. Okay, when we small. When we cook, when we cook, we cook. After warming up the corn tortillas on the flat top, they are then assembled with a little cabbage, the cooked chicken, and a sweet and sour sauce. Sweet and sour. She says she got the most loaded tacos in Portland. She may not be lying, y'all. Cajun flavor come through, it's smoky, there's a little bit of heat, tingles the taste buds. You got the sweet tartness on the corn tortilla, the balance with the veg, and it's loaded. I think I've dropped the whole chicken out of this one taco. Now to finish it off with some traditional Kenyan dishes, we have skuma wiki with ugali. Skuma means push, wiki is loosely translated from week. So it means push the week. You can change the vegetable, on the side, but you keep the ugali, the cornbread, constant. 
This is a muiko from Kenya. I had to bring in this in from Kenya because the ones that they had here when uh, when I first started teaching cooking classes, I would use the bamboo ones and they would break. Ugali is made by first boiling water, then adding your white maize until the desired ratios are met, constantly stirring until completely combined, waiting until it all is cooked thoroughly, and then you'll know when it's ready. And flip it. I was not expecting that last flip and bang. Okay. Once that's finished, the skuma wiki is reduced down a little bit with a few extra secret ingredient touches and then plated and ready to serve. And what you do is you just mold it with your hands. This is what you use as your, as your scoop. You know, just like that. Oh yeah, she cooked on the outside. It's kind of like a little firm, dry out there. Just give it a little knead like she said. So yeah, that cornbread, like she said, not any flavor coming from it. It is that transportation vessel. It will hit your stomach and it will fill you up. But I'm telling you, everything she's got surrounded right there, full of flavor. I love the touch of cabbage, like you said, for a touch of sweetness. And then the onions, tomatoes cooked down, sweet, a little tart. I mean, you can tell this is her favorite dish to eat and make. Because she's just got it down perfect. I mean, from the way she was cooking in there, timing everything perfect, to the way this tastes. food to make you happy. I'll tell you all a little secret. Today was her off day, but she still came in and cooked, cleaned, prepped, did all that to, to show her restaurant, to show it to me, to show it to y'all. That is love, that is something special. So thank you so much to her today because as if the food and beverage industry is so difficult as it is. And then to, even on your little, very few days off to come in, so special. You eat pelmini a lot? Many times? Oh uh, yeah. So you're from Ukraine? Yeah, I'm from Ukraine. Okay, we're back off at Hawthorne Asylum. And fun fact, my Uber driver is from Ukraine. We're here at Balimi Balimi, which is like a, a type of dumpling from that area. He said, I gotta try, so he came with me. Yeah, you tell me if it's good or no, okay? <laughs> this is Andres. So we really wanted to showcase some of the best like Slavic food. Right. So that's where we're here. He has a passion for Slavic food, and especially when it comes to dumplings, AKA Belmini. In, in Russian is pilmeni, but there's a d distinction. Pilmeni is anything that's meat filled, and vareniki is um, vegetarian filled. While the food cart may be a new concept, Andres and his family have been slinging out these dumplings for years. We, we, have, we have been like making these dumplings, you know, since like like 1998. But these dumplings have a history that spans centuries of years and are especially popular in the Siberian region for being more than just doughy, delicious morsels. Dumplings or pilmeni got so popular in Russia is because they would like, during the summer, they would hunt. They would, you know, uh, get all this meat, they would grind it up, they would form dumplings. During the winter, they would legit like hold all the dumplings in the attic because it's so cold in Siberia. Okay, so actually that pilmeni, that dumpling, it's like a survival technique. You can imagine like years and years ago, grinding that meat, making these dumplings, save them for tough winters, times when they don't have these animals, they can't hunt, they can't gather. So this is traditionally something that's frozen and then cooked just like they're doing right here, very traditionally. After being fully cooked, the pelmeni are tossed in a little bit of butter. Some butter. They're then topped with sour cream, green onion, dill, and a house-made tomato sauce. How was it? Very good. Like home? Excellent, excellent. Excellent pilmini, excellent board. Mm. Everything okay. Thank you, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you for board. Yes. Got your dumplings over here. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Now, really, I'm so thirsty. That kitchen is not cool at all. And they got their little fermented drink, which Andre was talking about, and I've butchered the name like 18,000 times. I think it's like cursed, cursed. So we also make kwas. It's a fermented drink made out of like uh, cranberry juice, like raisins and bread, and it ferments for about maybe like five days. Really popular in Russia and Ukraine. Always eaten with pelmeni? Yes. So it's kind of like a street drink. Cheers, y'all. Mm. Oh, fruity, tart, slightly sweet, not too acidic, not too tart. 
It's just mild, really refreshing. Takes away your thirstiness and kind of gets that carbonation to open up that stomach and get ready to eat some dumplings. Your future looks bright, yeah, because you're about to eat some dumplings. One of my personal goals in life, to eat every type of dumpling in the world. But we got all types of stuff. We got the vinegar, we got the balsamic, and that Georgian hot, hot sauce. Actually, let's be a naturalist here, just try it with nothing. I gotta say, I am almost ashamed. I'm 28 going on 29, it's my first time to try this. That dill sour cream working together is like a one, two flavor punch. A little bit thicker wheat wrapper to give you that hardiness to warm you up. You gotta realize this is cold weather food, perfect for a day like today in Portland. Now a little bit of chicken in there, give you that protein flavor. It just satiate a little bit. Feel like you're eating a meal. Go with the mustard. Ooh. Oh my nose. Ooh, that will like make your lungs and your nose and everything burns. When I say hot mustard, y'all, they're gonna bring it. Mm. Again, the hardiness, that doughiness, it's that hot mustard, that tangy, I'm all about that. Let's go and finish it off with the Georgian chili sauce. Tangy. I did not expect so much tanginess with these dishes, but again, the fat, the heavy carbs, and then that tangy, slightly acidic profile working together. Flavor combos I did not know I needed in my life. This folds perfectly into the Portland mentality here, which is the little guy wins.